Are we ready to rock and roll here? Yeah, let's go. Are we ready here? No, it's not 7.30 yet. It's, it's going to be at least. It's 6.30. In compliance with Chapter 231 of the Open Public Meeting Act of the State of New Jersey, adequate notice has been given to all members of the governing body, the local source, and the Westfield leader, the two newspapers designated to receive such notice. This notice is also posted on the Borough Hall uh, Bulletin Board. Uh, I'll ask everyone to stand for an invocation from Councilwoman Fetch Kakamo. Lord, please bless our community. Please also bestow blessings on our police department, fire department, rescue squad, and other emergency personnel, as well as our servicemen and women serving both here and abroad during these difficult times. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Martha, can we have a roll call, please? Here. 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 Next, we have the approval of the minutes for the regular and executive session meeting on February 20th, uh, two, 2018. So, so moved. moved. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Poll the council. Council Yes. Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. Yes. Councilman Yes. Yes. Next, we have the approval of the minutes of the work and executive session meeting on March 6, 2018. So moved. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Paul, the council, please. Councilwoman Andre. Abstain. Councilman Yerkes. Abstain. Councilwoman Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. Yes. Okay, we uh, have uh, some proclamations that we're going to uh, do tonight. The uh, first one is for some of our youngsters that I, I see uh, in, in the audience uh, tonight. I also see uh, our, our VFW commander here tonight, Tim McLaughlin. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I'd like to read the, the proclamation. Whereas the VFW Patriot Pen Essay Competition gives students an opportunity to write essays expressing their views on an annual patriotic theme. Whereas the essay contest encourages young minds to examine Americans' history along with their own experience in, in modern American society. Whereas each year the theme of the competition changes and is always based upon patriotism. Whereas the VFW commander chose the 2017-2018 theme to be America's gift to my generation. Whereas all entries commenced at the local VFW post level where the essays for the Union County District 5 are judged and chosen. And whereas six VFW posts in Union County District 5 participated in the essay contest, contest they included VFW post uh, 335, 2230, 6259, 7474, uh, 1000, 10122, and 10136. Whereas for the first time, three Deerfield students were selected as VFW Union County District 5 Patriot Pen Essay winners, all coming from VF Post 10136. Whereas Hannah Tao uh, won first place, Richard Batali won second place, and Sarah Lukenbach won third place. I'm sorry if I mispronounced Rachel. anyone. Rachel, what did I say? Richard. Richard, <laughs> Rachel, where are you? Okay, <laughs> Rachel, I apologize. <laughs> now, therefore, be it resolved by the mayor and council of the borough of Mountainside that Hannah Tau, Rachel Batali, and Sarah Lukenbach are hereby commended for their achievements. Please come forward. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. 
don't you all turn around and look at the, you want to take a picture? Okay. Yeah, you should all stand in front of you. You look better than I do. <laughs> Congratulations. We, we do have two other proclamations for vo volunteers that assisted us in the uh, last, uh, during the last nor'easter that we had. Uh, before I go through those proclamations, I just want to give a little report on what happened uh, during the nor'easter. The first one I have is from Al Atanasio, the police department. Uh, during this period, the Mountainside Police Department monitored the progress of the storm by reviewing alerts from the National Weather Service and the situational reports from the state ELC. As we all know, the governor declared a state of emergency at 8 o'clock on Tuesday, March 6th. Snow began to fall on Wednesday at approximately uh, 1 o'clock. Um, from the 1, 1 p.m. on Wednesday to 11.59 on Friday, the Mountainside Police Department responded to 169 calls uh, for service. Uh, at that point, New Jersey uh, uh, Transit Police advised they were suspending all train and bus services. The police department coordinated local activities with the Mountainside Fire Department, the Rescue Squad, the DPW, and um, em emergency management, as well as the school su superintendent. External services were coordinated. Uh, was made to include New Jersey Department of Transportation, Union County Roads, PSE&G, Jersey Central Power and Light, Verizon, and Comcast. I was on a number of uh, <coughs> uh, uh, conference calls with uh, PSE&G as well as with Jersey Central Power and Light to help coordinate getting the, the power back on. I also was in contact with both of their uh, local uh, re representatives. Uh, public alerts were continually <coughs> sent via the uh, services employed by the uh, uh, police department. Um, and those services include the Mountainside Police Facebook page, the uh, Mountainside Police Twitter account, and the <coughs> Union County First Alert. These alerts consisted of storm preparation uh, measures, uh, emergency contact numbers, storm progress, text messages, school and road closures, and uh, detailed uh, and detailed detour maps for roads that were closed. Uh, the 169 calls were consisted of 120 utility and, and DPW incident, five motor vehicle accidents, seven disabled motor vehicles, five traffic incidents, seven rescue calls, two people were injured by fallen tree limbs, nine fire alarms, 10 security checks, six property damage calls, seven public assist calls. There was over 25 hours of overtime expended by the uh, uh, Mountainside uh, po Police uh, Department. That's the report from the, the Police Department. And, and the next report is from the DPW. Uh, the, the, the second of the Nor'easters brought, as everyone knows, dangerous and heavy snow that brought down hundreds of branches, many trees, and lots of power lines. DPW plowed open all public areas, including Borough Hall lots, fire department roads and lots, school lots, roadways, and access to the commuter bus stop. They also cleared all sidewalks and entrances uh, in the Borough Hall area. DPW worked closely with the plowing contractor at the height of the storm and afterwards. Their men responded to multiple calls of trees down and large branches across many roads which were cleared as long as there was no power lines involved. Many of the uh, roadways uh, could, could not be uh, cleared because they, there were trees that were down that involved uh, power lines and uh, they could not be moved until PSE&G and JCP&L deemed them to be safe. That's due to the uh, danger of electrocution. There were also barricades, cones, and orange barrels uh, put around the areas where the power lines were down to make sure that uh, the community was, was uh, safe. Uh, uh, our DPW crew right now, along with two private contractors, are currently 
going through the town and picking up branches and, and chipping them. They, have been, they also work to open the roads and are currently removing large and small limbs that have been dragged to the homeowner's lawn, curb lined by residents for disposal. These two contractors were hired by the governing body to speed up the cleanup. For, I know we're getting a lot of qu questions about trees. We are going to continue to pick up branches. Uh, they stopped today so they could get ready for the uh, impending storm. Uh, after the storm, we're going to see, you know, what the town looks like and, uh, you know, what is going to be their ability to continue to uh, pick up the branches and limbs. But as we did uh, in, during Superstorm Sandy, we did go around and pick up the limbs and, and branches, and we'll provide more uh, information about that uh, after the next storm, because I can only imagine we're going to bury some of the trees and branches that we have down now, and we're going to have new ones that, that are going to fall. But we're going to do the best to, to, uh, to uh, clear the town. Um, besides our DPW and our, our police, which are paid services, there were a number of volunteers who are, are sitting in the audience tonight that went well above, uh, you know, the, the, the call for duty. Uh, so the next proclamations are to uh, honor uh, some of those uh, uh, volunteers. Uh, I'm going to start with the uh, fire department, uh, and I'm going to read the, the proclamation, okay? Whereas on March 7, 2008, New Jersey was hit with a winter storm with Winter Storm Quinn leaving topple trees, down power lines, and blocked roadways. Whereas the Mountainside Volunteer Fire Department fearlessly answered the call of help through hazardous road conditions. Whereas the hard work and dedication of the Mountainside Volunteer Fire Department helped ensure the safety and care of citizens in need, particularly Mountainside resident Curtis Fetzk Fetzko, who was hit by a tree while he was using his snow blower that evening. Whereas special thanks should be given to the brave firefighters who were the first responders to this accident. Whereas through their actions and deeds of Thomas Triola, Alex Polis, Matthew Pristas, TJ McGowan, Casey Olihan, Kevin Pereira, Victor Pereira, and John Brown have proven themselves to be selfless individuals who have brought pride and honor to our community. Whereas fighter fighters Edwin Lima, Troy Jalbert, and Austin Sincaric were stationed at the firehouse and able to respond to other calls. Whereas the following days, volunteers Anthony Pecorelli, Matthew Watson, Casey Olihan, Chris Cilio, and Austin Sincaric uh, helped to clear various roadways. Now, now, I guess you'll, you'll notice that un, uh, conspicuously we left one name out of that, and that is, I, I, although I profess to be perfect, it looks like we made a, an unintentional mistake and it was an oversight, and we need to include Gary Canigallo in, in this proclamation, okay? And uh, I, I take the blame, I'm the head guy here, so the buck stops with me, but we still have to recognize you we'll get some amended proclamation so you can hang one up in the, hopefully hang one up in your house, okay? <laughs> now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council of the borough of Mountainside extends its heartfelt gratitude and thanks to the members of the Mountainside Volunteer Fire Department for all of their hard work during Winter Storm Quinn. Well, please come forward and get the
Okay, let's give him a big round of applause. The next group of individuals are from our Mountainside Volunteer Rescue Squad. Whereas on March 7th, New Jersey was hit with another nor'easter, leaving the same toppled trees and down pyre lines and block roads. Whereas the Mountainside Volunteer Rescue Squad fearlessly answered the calls for assistance during the storm. Whereas the hard work and dedication of the Mountainside Volunteer Rescue Squad help ensure the safety and care of our citizens, particularly, again, Curtis Fetzko, who was hit by a tree when he was using a snowblower. Where special thanks should be given to the brave volunteers uh, who, trans who, who transported the victim to University Hospital, Trauma Center, in Newark. Whereas through their actions and, and deeds, Che Castro, Alex Foley, Jamie Pereira have proven themselves to be compassionate individuals who take pride in assisting our community. Whereas with the assistance of members Chris Cilio and Severio Zepetto, the volunteer rescue squad was able to respond to numerous calls. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and Council of the Borough of Mountainside extends its heartfelt gratitude and thanks to the members of the Mountainside Volunteer uh, Rescue Squad for all their hard work during the Nor'easter. You know, at, at this point, we usually uh, tell the people that receive the proclamations that uh, they don't have to stick around for the, the rest of, of, of the meeting and they can leave. But I would like to take this one ex exception with that. I just want to make sure that everyone uh, knows that, you know, we're having another storm that's coming up uh, and, and the best place to get uh, reliable and uh, up-to-date information during this emergency and really uh, at, at any time, there's, there's a couple of places to do that. Uh, the first one is the <coughs> Mountainside uh, webpage, which is www.mountainside-newjersey.com and also the Borough of Mountainside Facebook page. We also have the, the police outlets that also give us, uh, again, reliable and up-to-date information. The first one is the, is the Borough, uh, Borough of Mountainside Police Department Facebook page, the Borough of Mountainside Police Department Twitter account, and really this one is very important. It's a Union County first alert system. It's really designed to put out fast uh, emergency alerts during emergencies. They do a very good job. Uh, anyone that's not signed up for it should really sign up for it. Uh, and it's Union County First Alert, uh, ucnj.org slash alerts uh, uh, slash, and really you should only go into the ones for Mountainside. If you, if you don't do that, you certainly are welcome to, to sign up for it for other towns if you have an interest in it, but if you don't just limit the alerts that you want to get from Mountainside, you're going to get, you know, an alert from a dog that got lost in Elizabeth, and you might not want that. Okay, so it's very important that uh, the public understands that this is the place to get reliable information. There are other websites out there. Unfortunately, 
we've been finding that some of the information on it is not timely, it's not accurate, it's unreliable, and even sometimes it's, it's misleading uh, uh, to the public. Uh, also, anyone that wants to get information directly from me, my email address is on the website. It's pmirabelli at mountainside underscore, I guess that is, newjersey.com. It's on the website. So if you want to send me an email, I'll be glad to uh, respond to you. You know, we're out and about during the storm. We're, 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 we're trying to do the best we can to make sure all the roads are plowed, all the roads are, are, are safe. Uh, and if you need any information directly from me, that, that's how you get a, get a hold of me, okay? So I said my little spiel. I hope everyone is safe in the storm. Uh, you can go on your way. You're welcome to stay for our Monday meeting, but uh, you don't have to. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with resolution 47-2018. Wendy? Having a receivable balance remain in a 2014 Union County Kids Recreation Trust Fund. This resolution will cancel that balance in the amount of $4,977.74. This is a bookkeeping amount left over to be canceled following the completion of a fully funded grant project. Second. Yeah, motion, we have a second. Paul, the council, please. Yes. 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 Next, we have resolution 48 2018. Glenn. This resolution approves the following temporary appropriations under NJSA 40A 4 19, which allows for the transfer of funds within the year 2018 as recommended by the borough's chief financial officer, Jill Good. The Railway Valley Sewage Authority, $465,000. Public Employees Retirement System, $214,900. Police and Fire Retirement System, $731,200. Other Insurance, $160,000. The Dispatch Operating Expenses, $30,000. Senior Citizen Operating Expenses, $5,000. Administrative Operating Expenses, $70,000. <coughs> No expenses, $150,000. Expect that one to go up, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Back next month. <laughs> we have a motion, we have a second. Second. Paul the council, please. Councilwoman Yes. Councilman Yes. 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 Next, we have resolution 49 2018. Bob. Yes. Having prepaid, prop prepaid property taxes in and thereby producing excess, this resolution will authorize the borough tax collector to issue a refund to the homeowner at block 5.19, lot one, in the amount of $4,000. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Poll the council, please. Yes. Councilman Yes. 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 Next, we have resolution 50 2018, Deanna. This resolution will create a 2018 temporary capital budget for various infrastructure improvements for bank stabili stabilization projects, sanitary, storm sewer improvements, resurfacing, various roadway projects, including drainage and curbing improvements within the borough. These projects under this temporary budget of $900,000, of which $45,000 will come from the capital improvement fund and $855,000 will be a bond anticipation notes will not be included in 2018 permanent capital budget once the municipal budget is adopted. Will be included. I'm sorry, will be included. We have a motion. Second. Just so everyone understands what this money is going to be uh, used for, it's, it's some uh, capital uh, projects. Mainly it's to continue with our uh, plan of uh, repaving roads in Mountainside and helping to improve the, the <coughs> infrastructure. They're going to be uh, repaving uh, Meeting House Lane with, a, with a, a match grant from DOT. There's Dunn Parkway Sanitary uh, Sewer Replacement, which has been ongoing. We have I&I &I work on the sanitary sewer system, which is work to make sure that the uh, water from uh, 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 storm water does not go into the sanitary sewer system because that will 
increase the amount that we have to pay to Huawei Valley. They're going to clean and TV inspect all the sanitary sewers to make sure that they're in good shape. We have New Jersey DEP stormwater requirements, which we have to fulfill every year. The Elizabeth Gas Project on Tanglewood, they're going to be replacing, they're going to be uh, updating the gas lines there, and they're going to be paving half of the, repaving half of the street. We're going to take on repaving the, the rest of it. We're going to also repave Chipmunk Hill, uh, the upper portion of New Providence Road. Uh, Endor Lane. We also have our ongoing pothole replacement, which we allocate $40,000, and we have to upgrade some, some traffic signs. So that's how that $900,000 is going to be uh, uh, allocated. Uh, Paul, uh, board, please. Councilman Andre? Thank you, by the way. Yes. Councilman Deerkis? Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. yes. <clears throat> Okay, so the next is uh, uh, Resolution 51-2018, Renee. Following the purchase of a new public works truck, Director Ronald Rom Romack recommends the older truck, a 2000 Ford F-350, having 83,477 miles, be placed out for auction. This resolution will authorize that recommendation. <clears throat> second. We have a motion. We have a second. Paul, the council, please. Councilman Yes. Uh, yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. Okay, next we have resolution 52-2018. Deanna. This resolution approves the following management positions at the community pool for the 2018 season. John Tesato as pool manager at $11,834.49. Scott Lodati. Lodati as assistant manager at $7,690.46, and Pat Mamrak as assistant manager at $7,320.06. These positions are all recommended by Frank Mazella, pool director. Second. So, we have a motion, we have a second. Poll the council, please. Councilwoman Andre? Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilwoman Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. Yes. Next, we have Resolution 53-2008. Bob? Yes. As the County of Union announces its 2018 Municipal Infrastructure Aid Grant, this resolution will authorize the borough engineer, Mike Disco, to apply for this grant for road work on Meeting House Lane. So moved. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. Poll of Council. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. 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 Next, we have Resolution 54 2018. Renee? Approaching the end of two leases for our 130 foot cellular tower, this resolution will authorize our borough clerk, Martha Lopez, to publish a notice of request for bids to lease. The two locations on the tower, as well as ground area for the use of wireless telecommunications, as approved by the borough attorney, John Post. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Poll the council, please. Councilman Andre? Yes. Councilman Deerkis? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Councilman Okay, next we have the second reading on Ordinance 1264-2008 mm -hmm. with uh, public input. We have a motion for that resolution, Glenn? Uh, a bond ordinance to authorize the undertaking of various infrastructure improvements in by and for the borough of Mountainside in the County of Union, State of New Jersey, to appropriate the sum of $900,000 to pay the cost thereof, to make a down payment to authorize the issuance of bond anticipation notes in the anticipation of the issuance of such bonds. So moved. We have a second? Second. second. And this uh, also relates to the prior uh, Resolution 50-2018, in which we describe what we're going to use this this money for. Uh, Paul, the council, please. Uh, open to the public. public uh, oh, sorry. Open to the public. Seeing no public participation regarding this ordinance, I move it be closed. Okay. All in favor of closing public portion, say aye. 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 Okay, so closed. Paul, the council. Councilman Andre? Yes. Councilman Deerkis? Yes. 
Yes. Councilman Yes. Yes. Now we have a first reading on Ordinance 1265-2018. Uh, Keith, if you want to do that, please. Ordinance 1265-2018 uh, is a bond ordinance to amend Section 4B of the Bond Ordinance 1250-2016, entitled Bond Ordinance to Authorize the Making of Various Public Improvements and the Acquisition of the New Communication and Signal Systems Equipment and New Information Technology Equipment by and for the Borough of Mountainside in the County of Union, State of New Jersey, to appropriate the sum of $975,000 to pay the cost thereof. So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Again, this is simply an amendment to the prior bond ordinance. The purpose of the amendment is that the ordinance uh, had uh, and the purpose was to authorize reconstruction of a softball field at Beachwood School. That's now being changed to authorizing the refurbishment of the tennis courts at Deerfield School and Borough Hall. That's the only amendment to the ordinance. All the council, please. Councilwoman Yes. 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 We also now have a motion, a uh, motion to approve a raffle application for the Mountainside Restoration Committee for an off-premise draw raffle. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, Glenn, you want to do bills and claims? Certainly. Be it resolved by the mayor and council of the borough of Mountainside that the following bills of the persons named are for the amount stated below, having been duly audited and found to be correct this 20th day of March 2018, the same be paid after council's review if and when funds are available, and that the mayor, council president, administrator, and treasurer are hereby authorized and directed to sign and deliver warrants for same. Total $636,172.42. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Call the council, please. Councilman Andre? Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Yes. Do we have any council comments? I have a few, Mayor. Uh, the Mountainside Library has some uh, very interesting events on the near horizon, and I'd like to uh, let everybody know that. Can you turn your, your microphone as you're getting a feedback? Uh -huh. Is that better? Good, thank you. The Lizard Guys, join us on March 26th from 3.45 to 4.30 p.m. for a spring break show for you. The Lizard Guys are from New Jersey and enjoy sharing their knowledge about the animal world. If you are interested in learning about reptiles and amphibians, then come and see our live animal presentation. Next program, Astronomy in Your Backyard, Mountainside resident John Sickle. A member of the Amateur Astronomers Incorporated will be at the library on March 29th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. giving a lecture introducing the night sky and the world of amateur astronomy. After the lecture, we will go outside for a tour of the night sky with telescopes and binoculars. Third event, the Friends of the Library Book Sale. The Friends of the Mountainside Library will be having their spring book sale in April. Donations will be taken from the 14th to the 18th. The 19th is, the, is preview night for Mountainside residents. 20th and 21st is the sale, and Monday the 22nd is the bag day. Finally, uh, the Devlin Collection. The Mountainside Historical Society is having an evening reception honoring Harry Devlin on March 22nd. The Larbert would like everybody to know they have a collection of Harry Devlin art and paintings that is on display at all times. Stop in at the library to see some of the, this Mountainside history. Thank you. Anyone else? Bob? Yeah, um, <coughs> the Mountainside um, opening day softball um, and baseball parade uh, is going to be Saturday, April 21st. Um, we're looking for antique cars or hot rods or anything of interest to drive in the parade. If you're interested, um, uh, get in contact with uh, Deanna, uh, Councilman Andre, Councilwoman Andre or Councilman uh, Turner, or if you just show up at Garrett Road and Wood Valley Road the day of the parade. Um, at 8.30 line up, the parade begins at 9 o'clock, it's fun, it helps make the parade a little more fun with the, the cars and et cetera in it. Um, also the day is a great day for Mountainside, it's a it's an all day event, uh, baseball and softball games starting I believe around 10 o'clock and go until the early evening, there's food and fun and stuff, so it's a good, a good day at Mountainside, so if you're uh, 
interested. Uh, Saturday, April 21st, parade is uh, down Wood Valley to Charles Street, right down Central, Central, Central to Wyoming, sorry. It's, uh, Wood Valley, uh, starting at Garrett Road, down Central to uh, Wyoming, down to the school, the backside school. So if you're not interested in actually going to the opening day ceremonies, uh, lining a parade route is a, a fun thing to do. So. Um, Thanks, Bob. I, I just have a couple. If you see, to all the residents, if you see any cones or wa uh, barricades blocking wires, uh, please do not move them. Don't try to drive over them. Uh, they're very dangerous. If they're blocking your street or access to your home, uh, call the police department. They will get the appropriate people out there to make sure that they are safe to either be moved uh, and stay as far away from a downed wire as possible. You don't know if it's a phone wire, a Comcast wire or a uh, high voltage wire. So please, they're very, very dangerous. Stay as, as far away as possible. Uh, like I said, if they're blocking your access to your home, call the police department. Uh, they will uh, make arrangements to get you into your home if possible. And uh, also, we could also help the uh, fire department out. If you or your neighbors have a um, fire hydrant on your properties uh, after the storm, go over there with your shovel and dig it out because if, uh, God forbid, that there's a fire in the area and they have to first start to dig out the fire hydrant, that could delay things. So help, help us, help the volunteers. If you see a fire hydrant uh, on your property, if it's an uh, elderly home's property, you know, they can't get to it, go out and help uh, dig it out. It'll help us all, okay? And be safe. Um, I, after the uh, shooting down in Florida, I asked our police chief, Al Atanasio, to uh, go through and review the uh, safety policies and procedures that are in place at uh, all the schools in town. I believe we have seven schools. He's advised me that all the school safety policies and procedures have been reviewed by the police department and the school administration in, in each of the schools. The police department is recommending some additional safety measures to the seven public and private schools within, within the borough of Mountainside. Uh, Al has met with all of the administration in all those seven schools and the police department is going to be implementing these uh, additional measures uh, after uh, they were approved by all the school administrators. The details of these recommendations are not being made public because they're for the safety of the students, the school staff, and, and emergency uh, responders. So a review has been done, we're up to date, we're meeting all the, the standards that we have to, to meet uh, with our, our police department. That's all I have, anyone else? Any audience participation? Now be the time. Just give us your name and address, sir, okay? My name is Scott Klein, 242 South Fork. I have three questions, three quick ones. Uh, the first one's regarding the power lines and the homeowner. I'm a little confused as to, with 12 to 18 inches of wet snow headed our way, the responsibility of those branches overhanging the wires is that PSE and G, the borough, or the homeowner that's responsible? We, no, the homeowner should not touch any branches that are hanging on wires. That's PSE and G's okay. or JCP and L's responsibility to, to clear the branches off of those wires. And any branches that are down that are wrapped in wires, do not touch them. If you do have them on your property, please contact the police. You should really you should contact PSE and G so you get on the list. To contact the police department, they'll go out. If it's a situation where it's not safe, they'll put cones up to make sure that, that, that it is safe. But that's strictly PSE and G and JCP and L. Do you know if those two companies have done a survey of Mountainside prior to the storms to see which? There, there was an on, I, I know, at least with PSE and G, I'm not so sure with JCP and L. They did go through and do a lot of trimming around the wires, especially uh, after Sandy. I guess, unfortunately, we've come to find out they probably should have done a little bit more, more trimming. Uh, so I, I have a feeling that that'll be something that's ongoing after, this, after the storm. And we used to have a, a sign on New Providence in 22, the Tree City USA, I think they called it. Yeah. Have we lost that designation? Uh, well, we, I don't think we, 
I think we, for, we did not file some of the paperwork that we should have. We're in the process of refiling that, and we're going to get that back. Yes. Uh, Maybe you can tell me what, or tell us what that's about. Is it that we have a certain number of trees in the borough? No, I don't think it is. There's a number of requirements uh, that you have to fulfill. Uh, some of them have to do, I think, uh, Jim, or, yeah, yeah, if to, you talk to our administrator, he could tell you what that is. But we're in the, pro we're in the process of... You have to have a shade tree commission. You have to have a certain amount of trees planted. There's, there's certain criteria. We talked to uh, the U.S. Forest, or I think it's U.S. Forestry Service that kind of runs out of the... Combined and uh, and so we, we we somebody brought that up that we didn't the sign was gone and we didn't realize it that we, we dropped the ball and let it let it expire or let it. So stop. can we apply again so we, for we're, 2019? We're, no, it's or? a constant. Once we're once we're back in the program, it's just re, re upping, sending them a letter saying we're interested we again. In so we're we're doing. in the process of re upping that though we are. And uh, we I, I talked to the person directly and uh, yeah. it had to come from the town itself. And uh, we're working on getting that set back up again. So That's not going to help with the visit. trees and the wires, though. Yeah. It's going to be a proclamation in April. Okay. So by April, we'll be back. We'll be back in trees. That may make that worse, actually. <laughs> Uh, for more trees. I guess that's not a part of the ordinance that says you can take down a certain number of trees on your home? No. On your, on your property? No. no, no, no. That's, no. That's it's more about counseling. keeping trees and reforesting and putting trees back and, so, and certain amount of trees and having them available for people. Like There's a bunch of different things that are, are pretty good. So I think once we get that back, and so we'll probably get some information out to the public about what it's all, all, all about. So. And just my last question is just out of my own curiosity. The, the cell tower, how much in 2000... 18 or 2017 how much did we get from the the that for that lease in round numbers the total revenue from both the multi user cell tower which is the bigger one the 130 foot one and then the smaller one which is a monopole just one user on that comes to about a quarter of a million dollars per annum and that goes into our budget yes, yes it does great okay thank you okay thank you Anything else from public as far as comments? I don't think. I would just like to add one more thing. Is uh, you know, uh, during the storm, there were some things that uh, people were uh, the the public works police department. I know you you commended the uh, fire department and uh, um, rescue squad, but the public works guys worked long hours, uh, and uh, the. Um, police department, like I said, answered a, a lot of calls, and and they all should be com commended because uh, it was a, an unusual storm. It came down quick, a lot of damage, a lot of trees, and uh, they did a really good job. Considered some of the other towns of you know, if you look drive through uh, the probably the one of the most expensive streets in Westfield right now. They're still all limbs all over the sides of the road. The roads are blocked. I don't even know what they're going to do on Hillside Avenue tomorrow because half Hillside Avenue right now is blocked with you know trees in the road. So. Uh, you know they, you know they do deserve, uh, uh, you know, um, some commendation that they did. They did a great job and they worked hard. And they worked long hours and, you know, they're still working hard and they're going to be working hard for a couple more weeks probably. With like the mayor said, uh, removing trees. Um, there were some things out there that, that we were going to stop removing branches and stuff like that. They did what they could do. I mean, there were some areas maybe not where you live in town that were a lot harder hit, and they worked on those areas first. I mean, I know there's streets right by me that still haven't been touched yet, but there's not as much in those areas, and they weren't as so they they did the uh, mayor. They started a certain area. They started on the west side of town, or they east did side? start on the west side of town from Central Avenue West was the hardest hit area. So, so they did. Uh, they they are working on it. Continuing, I'm sure the county is going to continue also. So. But I just want to say that, uh, you know, we do appreciate what they did for uh, us as residents and as you as residents. So, thank you. Thanks, Bob. Anything else? Okay, motion to adjourn. Moved. So adjourned.